going to be an explosion when it hits zero. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Butler Church of the Nazarene. And we have a special treat. We had our motorcycle blessing yesterday. I'm completely exhausted, so you don't want to hear me preach this morning. However, we have Teen Challenge, which is, uh, they've been here many times before. We pray over the work that they're doing. They do a marvelous work, and they just show you God's transformation power. So without further ado, we're going to bring up the Teen Challenge Choir to do our music, and they will be handling the entire service, and I'll wrap up and close at the end. Thank you. I want to go. I want to go over some of the things going on at Teen Challenge before we start. Before we start, though, let me uh, let me just say a prayer real quick to help me. Um, Lord, we just pray, God, that uh, you would receive all the glory today, Jesus, this morning. Um, apart from you, uh, none of this would be. We thank you. We praise you, Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. I just want to let you guys know that it's a miracle that we're here today. Today is a beautiful day. It's truly a miracle. Um, if you really knew where some of us have been and where we come from, and you knew some of our story, you would agree that it's truly a miracle that we're here today in our right minds and sober. Um, I'm going to go through some of the things going on at Teen Challenge. Don't be uh, alarmed if you see that I'm surprised by the slides myself because it's my first time doing this. So. <laughs> go ahead. I just want to let you guys know, first of all, that this Teen Challenge New Jersey originated in uh, Newark, New Jersey. And we were in a old, like, brick, broken down row home. That's where we started. Um, go ahead. And God has truly blessed us. This is, these are some pictures of our new facility. Uh, I think it was... We've been on this property for about seven years, I believe, um, from, from the inner city of, like, Newark to this. I mean, this is, this is just what God does, right? Look at this driveway. You come up the driveway, and this is what you see. This is our dining hall to the far right um, where we, the men have their meals. Next slide. These are our cabins, the dorms where we live. Um, me, myself, I was type of addict where I was on the street, you know, I was uh, sleeping on a, uh, one point I was in an alley sleeping on a wooden pallet, so to come to a place like this, um, these, our mattresses are tempur mattresses, yeah, so, but if you look at the, this is before and after, if you look at the after, tempur mattresses, I was sleeping on a pallet, and the reason I say this and highlight this is because when you come to Teen Challenge, where, where, you, where I was and where God brought me to, it, it gave me some dignity. It made me feel loved and valued, you know. When you're, when you're out on the street and you have a, I'm speaking about myself, and you have a cardboard sign and people are throwing change and, and mocking you, and then you come into a place like this and people are loving you, uh, we, eat, we eat great. You watch any guy in Teen Challenge, they come in skinny and they leave fat usually. So, I mean, you look at our living conditions. It's, this is just more about loving the guys, giving them some dignity, and helping to show the guys that there is hope and that they have a future. Next slide. This is our chapel. I actually got to be a part. You, you see the before, what it looked like. When I came in, I actually got to help uh, build the chapel and make it what it is today. You know, It's just amazing to watch the, the transformation from that to that, you know. But, uh, you know, as much work as it is to, to change a building, it was a lot more work to change a person. You know, changing a building is always doable and possible. But changing a person, that takes a miracle. You guys probably know that, especially when it comes to addiction. This is our women's home, the future site of our women's home. We, we have this property, and we're working on getting it started now. Um, our director, uh, Pastor Todd, is actually, you know, dealing with all the political red tape and all the stuff we got to deal with to try to 
make this happen. Um, and if you want to contact us or you want to see more of us, you can always uh, find us on, tw what is that, Twitter? <laughs> Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, also, we, we do things to raise money. Uh, we make tea, we sell tea, we sell coffee for change. We have uh, change, change Lives books that you'll find in the back. They're stories of people that have been changed. Their lives have been changed from this program. Um, this is a new thing we're doing now. We're, the men at the campus actually make these cutting boards. So you'll find these at the back table too. Um, handmade from the guys at our center. Pretty amazing when you see, you know, especially if you know the process of what it goes through, what, they, what it takes to make these boards, you know. It's amazing how beautiful they are. And God is just, you know, blessing this big time. So we encourage you guys, you know, at the end of the service to go back there and check out our products and, you know, support us. Um, also, we normally would hand you guys prayer cards, but uh, because of COVID and all that, we're not going to, you know, if you guys want a prayer card, they're on that back table, you know. Write down your information if you want, and we'll send you updates on what's going on with Teen Challenge. And otherwise, you could just write your prayer needs, and we'll, we'll pray for people. So somebody will be praying for you. You know, A lot of people I know have been praying for me recently because God's doing stuff, man. You know, And I don't pray that much as much as other people must be praying because the blessings I'm seeing, they got to be coming from somewhere. They ain't my prayers. I pray, but it's limited. The stuff that I'm seeing is, like, mind-blowing, you know? So I just want to, uh, maybe we can talk about this at the end, at the end of the service. We'll come back to the dollar a day, the sponsorship program. And what we'll do now is we'll, we'll bring the choir up, and we're going to sing some songs for you guys, worship the Lord, and we're going to do a couple testimonies. Search the word. Better than 
How you doing today, church? Uh, my name is Terrence Tyson, and I'm from Camden, New Jersey. I'm 29 years old, and uh, a little bit of my background. I'm the oldest brother of nine. I had a mother who was addicted to drugs. No father in the household, so I always felt it was me who was to carry the load and provide. Um, after countless times of having no heat for winters, electrics being cut off, I thought it was wise to go into the world and sell drugs. Um, but I learned very quickly it's very hard for a child to raise children. Um, so I continued down this struggle of, of uh, battling with myself of what to do. You know, I had a grandfather who showed me what it was to be a godly man, um, but I always chose the harder route. Uh, I watched a brother die before me. I watched a brother that's doing life in prison. Uh, and it's extremely hard to carry these guilts, thinking that if you had done something differently, they would have done something differently. Um, so I spiraled into addiction. Um, throughout this whole time, I've been shot, I've been stabbed. I've overdosed on drugs five times, but God's kept me. And it's through his grace that I'm here before you today. God saved me for a moment such as this to speak into the lives of men and women everywhere and to be unashamed. I thank Teen Challenge every day for giving me this opportunity to reclaim everything that the devil has taken from me. And it's only through his grace that, that we're able to do this. You know, we have a, a brotherhood here on this mountain um, that just stands better than anything I've ever seen in my life. You know... I've never seen men love the way these men love. We're able to shed tears together, you know, and build each other up. My mother died last month, and it's only because of me being able to cry on these men's shoulders that I didn't leave this place. Um, so there's a, there's a work being done here on this mountain. Miracles, I get to see miracles happen every day, and it's, it's nothing short of amazing. Um, so I I just thank Team Challenge for where my life is headed today. Um, the, the scripture I stand on is Isaiah 40, 31. For those who wait upon the Lord will have a renewing of strength. They will mount up wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and never fall. Thank you. Oh 
glorify, glorify the name of your name. Nothing can stand again. I choose to pray. Glorify, glorify the name of your name. Nothing can stand again. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. How you doing? I'm Dan. Uh, I'm from Monmouth County, New Jersey, uh, just a couple miles from the beach. Uh, my story is a little different. Uh, I did not, I had a great childhood, uh, great family, church every Sunday, mom, you know, Catholic, that sort of thing. Um, so I knew God my whole life, uh, but I, I didn't have that relationship. Uh, I've been blessed. Um, pretty smart guy, uh, did well in school academic scholarship, successful career. And uh, amidst those blessings, I knew God. Uh, church for me was a checkbox. I went there. It was, uh, you know, he was always there. But um, I just didn't have that relationship with him. And I put my emphasis on worldly things, and I had them. I was managing teams around the world, uh, wireless communications. If you have a cell phone, I know everything, how it works, how the network works, all um, but uh, life was good. I didn't know any adversity, but then I did. In a, in a short period of time, I was getting divorced. The company that I helped build was falling apart. Father was diagnosed with uh, terminal illness, and uh, I couldn't sleep at night. So uh, what was a social thing for me became a sleep medication, which is alcohol. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it, you know, if you're not walking that walk with him, you're susceptible to all sorts of horrors. And uh, I went from being successful and alcohol brought me to my knees. Um, it, it, it's progressive. It was I just a little bit to sleep at night, then it's a little more and a little more. And uh, you open that window to the enemy. And uh, you will do things you didn't think you could you would do. It, it came to, uh, you know, just to sleep at night to to get through the day. And then I found my, I went from here to a, a very serious fall. And it was drinking in the morning. It was, uh, didn't have the career that I had anymore, not because of the alcohol, but uh, it was a con contributing thing. But I did fall and it was like holding down just a, what I considered a pretty easy job. Everything that used to be easy became hard. And uh, I was drinking in the morning, like I said. I found myself in just situations, uh, DU DUI, places that I didn't thought I, I would be, uh, raunchy hotel rooms, because where I was living, they didn't tire of my drinking and, and that sort of thing. And it was, it was as bad as it, it could get, you know. But he, God, God was always there, you know. I, I found new church, but I'd go to church, and I'm like, you know, it's communion Sunday and they're passing out the little wines, my hand shaking. And I tried some rehabs and these were secular rehabs. It's a 30 day kind of get your, your brain clean for a little bit and start kind of thinking straight. But what I was missing and what I turned to with that alcohol is um, like a, something to quell the anxiety and, the, and that sort of thing. And in rehabs, they give you, they try to give you meds and things like that. And that's not... The, the, the real peace is through Christ. It, it, it's through Christ. It is, it's, that's the only way. So the things that, you know, the alcohol was temporarily but causing destruction. Um, it's, and it's, you know, I say the enemy. It's choices I made, though. And uh, in a roundabout way, I saw friends that I knew that, that were in addiction, and I saw them saved by the by the glory of God. And uh, after some secular rehabs, I kind of 
came full circle, and uh, a friend of mine that uh, that had been through Teen Challenge kind of got me here. And, and, and God got me here, and people just came out of the woodwork. And what I found here was, uh, like Terrence said, just an amazing brotherhood. And Christ is so present in that program that um, I was rich in the riches of this world. Now I'm rich in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I mean, only only by the grace of God. And, um, you know, like I said, while I was in church, my sh- hands are shaking and God's ser- saying to me, you, you can't serve two masters. And I can attest to you, no matter how good you have it, if you're not walking with God, there, there's a fall coming. And I thank him for the tribulations because I wouldn't be here and having the relationship with him but for that. So the scripture that I... That, that kind of keeps me going, keeps me, you know, and, and, and really tells me about my life is uh, Luke 16, 13, you can't serve two masters. I, I did it for a while, but you, you, uh, you will love one and hate the other. You'll serve one and despise the other, and I'm serving the right one now. Uh, four months clean and a uh, peace and a love that I've never experienced in my life. So, praise Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name's Arthur Graff. Um, I was actually had the privilege of uh, talking here about a year ago to everybody. Um, I don't like to dwell on the past, but um, how else can I tell you what God did for me, right? So um, my childhood was, was really good. My, my parents worked. My dad had me in sports. He actually had me in boxing since I was 12 years old. Um, he ended up getting uh, diagnosed with a terminal illness. And um, it, I watched my hero fall apart in front of my eyes. You know, um, he was prescribed a ton of painkillers, um, morphine actually, and I saw him change not just from the sickness but from the addiction so fast that um, within a year my mom kind of gave up and started taking his medication with him. Um, within a year after that they lost custody of me and my two little brothers. That's how fast addiction could just ruin a life. Um, I lived with my uncle, I lived with different people, um, I was separated from my family, my brothers. When I was about 16 years old, I, um, I found out my parents had a place in North Philly they were living um, in Kensington, which I didn't realize how it was there, but if you, you know, know anything about it, it's rough. But I love them unconditionally, and um, I wanted to go back and live with my parents no matter where they were living. But when I, uh, when I returned, it was worse than ever. Um, I had no consequences for anything I did. I wasn't sent, sent to school, really. Um, I would come back at night out drinking with my friends or smoking weed, and my parents' heads would be on the floor, just, just nodded out. Um, my aunt and uncle didn't want to take care of my brothers no more, so they sent them back to live with us. Um, and um, a lot like Terrence, I, I felt it my responsibility to take care of my two younger brothers. Um, I still think it's a responsibility as a man to do that. Um, a few years later, my dad was so sick at this point, and he kept um, abusing his medication. Um, every other week, I had an ambulance at my house. Um, he had OD, and they kept bringing him back over and over again. Um, when I was 18, I finally found him um, OD on the ground, and he wasn't coming back. My mom had to uh, go to rehab right away because she was out of his medication, you know. So. I was left in the house by myself. They had already lost custody of my two younger brothers again before that. And um, there's not a lot of jobs in North Philly like that for, um, besides selling drugs. I despise drugs for what they did to my life, but that was what you do. <laughs> That's what you do around there. Um, a couple months into selling heroin, I, um, I started using it. Within a few more months after that, I was shooting it. I was just... It, by the grace of God, my house was raided in a sting operation by the police when I was 19 years old. If not, I would have been dead long ago. Um, after that, finally, I was able to get my mom and my brother Benny out of North Philly into Jersey. Um, I thought it would be so much better here, and it was for a while. Um, I was clean after that, but I still had a lot of resentment in my heart. I kept getting into fights. I just, I was resentful from my childhood. I just had a lot of anger inside of me, and I kept getting into fights, which led to one altercation where I was stabbed in my lungs, in my heart, and um, I was bleeding to death quick. I was rushed to a hospital in Wilmington, Delaware, and um, 
they had to do a full surgery on me. They told my mom and my brother to go home. He's never going to wake up. And um, I was in um, a coma, tubes in me everywhere. And um, by the grace of God, again, I woke up out of that coma. Um, I sat straight up in that bed the next day. Nobody was around me because I told my family to go home. Um, I knew that was God in my life at that point, but I wasn't ready to submit. You know, I knew there was something keeping me alive and a reason I'm here, but I just wasn't ready to submit. They gave me a ton of Oxycontin and pain medication, which led to a relapse, which led to me in and out of jail, in and out of rehabs, um, walking around with just, just empty inside. I'm in and out of crisis units, psych units. Um, I wasted my entire 20s with drugs. Um, finally, in my 30s, I got to the point, getting clean, you know, getting messed up again. Um, my little brother, Benny, actually um, went to Teen Challenge. I never heard of it in my life. And I saw within a couple months how good he was doing. Um, he ended up, he kept having these guys pray for me to come there, and that's it. And I was not, I did not want to do it. I didn't want to go somewhere that long. I, I just wasn't ready. It took me to where I was living on a motel room floor, um, strung out on fentanyl to the point where I finally called my brother. I said, Benny, I'm, I'm ready. I'll do anything to change my life. I don't care what it is. I will do anything to have a future. Um, he didn't believe me I was going to come, but <laughs> I ended up showing, showing up there uh, about 19 months ago now. Um, I didn't have much faith, but I just had that little bit, that little mustard seed. I was open to anything to change, and I got to see what God did in my life. I got to see what um, caring and um, what it just, I wake up, and I got my brothers all around me. Um, I live in, we live in a beautiful, beautiful place. We're up on a mountain. I wake up, and I'm in the woods, which is, it beats North Philly by a lot, you know. Um, but I look down, and I see these scars all over me, on my arms and my chest, and I used to hate them. But now they constantly remind me that God kept me alive for a yeah. reason. Every time I see them, like, I, I was just so upset, and now I just know, like, I'm, I'm here for a purpose, and I'm going to achieve that purpose. I'll never, ever get high again. I finally graduated a couple weeks ago. Um, I want to I wanna stick around for a while, and um, I look forward to my future and what God has for me. Thank you, guys. Never 
gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Oh, you never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You were my testimony. never gave up on me you never gave up on me you were my testimony Jesus you were the voice in the desert you're calling me out in the dead of night fighting my battles for me you are my rescue story lifting me up from the ashes Carry my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You are my rescue story. You are, you are, you are my rescue story. You are, you are, you are my rescue story. All right, we still have some time. Um, God has uh, laid something on my heart, so I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, God is a God of miracles, right? He, when Jesus was among us, he did miracles all the time. And he's still among us, and he's still doing miracles. Um, I want to talk about two Two stories from the Bible where uh, the Lord healed somebody. Um, the first one was at the pool of Bethsaida, I think it is, which means the pool of mercy or something, house of mercy. So this guy is uh, sitting there, and he's, he's broken, and he needs to be healed, right? I, this, these stories remind me of the stories that I hear from Teen Challenge, and it reminds me of my own story. So that's why I'm sharing this. So um, this guy's broken. It said he was 38 years. He couldn't walk. You know, he couldn't, he couldn't manage his life. His life was a, a wreck, you know. Um, he laid on his mat. I remember uh, laying on it myself, laying on a piece of cardboard on the sidewalk in Center City, Philadelphia. I remember... Uh, I could walk, but it was like I couldn't walk. You know what I mean? I mean, I was stuck. Addiction is powerful. You know, 2019, it was 80,000 deaths from overdose, from opiates. And 2019, or no, that was 2019, I'm sorry. 2020, the statistics are already way worse than that. They're not totally in yet, but it's way worse than it was, and it's getting worse and worse as things turn out the way they are. Um, but I remember being trapped, and, and I know what it's like to be that lame man laying on his mat, stuck. I had a, a bad tooth infection. You know, I probably hadn't showered in a week or two. Um, in a big city full of people, yet totally alone, you know, and feeling like there was no hope. And actually, at that time, I was hoping that I would die, that I would overdose. That's what I was hoping for. Um, what Jesus said to this man laying at the pool was kind of strange. He said to him, um, do you want to be healed? This guy is, hasn't walked in 38 years. And Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? Unless we want to be healed from our addiction, God, you know, he gives us free will. You know, and some people truly deep inside, because Jesus, when he speaks, he cuts right to the soul. And he knows the truth. And people might say they want to be healed, and I'm tired of living like this, but do they really want to be healed? And then he heals this guy. Just pick up your mat and walk. And then uh, the next thing he says to him a little bit later is, uh, go and sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. And we all know stories of people who struggle with addiction, got freedom, 
went back, overdosed, and died, right? And Jesus says to this man, do, you know, go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. Because we got to do this every day. We got to pick up our cross every day. We got to die to ourselves and follow the Lord every day. It's not a one and done thing, right? Especially with, with us. I mean, we're all, every, everybody has certain addictions and sins, but ours are, have serious consequences, immediate serious consequences. So they're more obvious. So God can use us to, as a, you know. And then we go to the, uh, we go to the next healing situation I want to talk about where, where they, they lower this guy down through the roof. I think the same thing. He was paralyzed and, and they, want, they couldn't get to Jesus. And uh, they lowered him down through the roof just so that they, can, they knew if I can get him to Jesus, we could get him healed. If, 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 they could, if they could get him to Teen Challenge, we know that Jesus is there. And they might find healing, right? They might find that relationship. We can just get them there. And so I did surrender, I, and, and somebody sent me to Teen Challenge. And it's not Teen Challenge that does the healing, obviously. That's just Teen Challenge is a, is a place where you can be separated from the world and all the stresses and cares and the, because it's, it's such a, a gripping thing. It, it's such a – it's hard to explain, but it, it, it's hard Impossible to break out of, apart from Christ. It's impossible. And so at Teen Challenge, you're, you're, you're putting an environment where it's always about the Lord. The standard is Christ. You know, you're exposed to the Word. You're loved. You're cared for. Like I said earlier, you you're valued. You you get some dignity. You know, but still, do you want to be healed? Right? Still. Um. So they lowered this guy down. Jesus says to him. Your sins are forgiven you. Now pick up your mat and walk. Oh, no. I, I, I'm, let me back that up. Your sins are forgiven you so that you know I have the power to forgive sins. Pick up your mat and walk. So I come to Teen Challenge, right? I get healed of my hepatitis, right? Get my dental, all my dental stuff done. My criminal, uh, back, all my uh, legal issues cleaned out, they are cleared out, dealt with while I'm at Teen Challenge, right? I, uh, I get healthy. I'm exercising, eating, right? I'm taking showers. I get, I'm no longer lonely, surrounded by friends now, surrounded by friends, people that care, right? God, he said, pick up your mat and walk. And um, I got a car. By the way, I met a beautiful Christian woman right here who's now my fiance. I have, now I have four daughters. I had two before, they multiplied. Right? I, f I wake up in the morning and I'm excited and joyful about the day. That's one of the biggest miracles, really. See, the stuff on the outside and these things I'm telling you, but it's the stuff on the inside, really, right? I'm standing here at a church right now talking about the Lord. Sometimes I'm in Teen Challenge and I'm standing up in front of all the guys and I'm teaching them the Word of God, right? It's a miracle, a total, complete miracle. But Jesus said uh, to this man, so that you know that your sins are forgiven you. So that you know I have power to forgive sins. Stand up and walk. You're healed. And so all this external stuff I'm telling you about, I could probably go on and on and on, all kinds of stuff. The other day they threw a birthday party for me. Like I, they brought out a birthday cake. They're singing happy birthday. I almost cried because it's like I remember being totally lonely and hopeless. Now all these people are like, happy birthday, and they're like honoring me. And that just, it, did, it moved me. And I hate birthdays, and this moved me. Almost moved me to tears. Um, a lot of miracles that God did, and God has done. It's, it's amazing to see the things he's lining up in my life and how they're working out so perfectly. But here's the thing. And it's, and it's amazing to see what, the guys, what God's doing in these guys' life. Like Terrence said, we constantly see miracles. We see them all the time. And like Dan said, he was amazed by the people he saw that had got recovery through Christ. He marveled, like, wow, they were addicted and now they're free. It's 
more importantly than all that stuff I told you, all that external stuff, more important than that, the greatest miracle isn't that my addiction had been overcome. That's not the miracle. That's not the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle was that God had forgiven my sins. When I think about what that means, I now have a right standing before the Lord, the creator of the universe. And now I will not be eternally separated from him. Instead, I'll be with him. New body, new heaven, new earth. I mean, the real miracle is not the healing of my addiction and the, the sickness and the legal issues. And, you know, now I have this, uh, this happy, wonderful, joyful life. That's not even the real miracle. It was my sins had been forgiven. I don't know if we realize how, because we don't, we don't realize really what that means quite yet. And one day we will, we will see what that means. And when we see, we'll be blown away and we will glorify him. We will, we will sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Taking away the sins of, of me, of a sinner like me. And giving me, looks at me totally righteous. As being righteous and being, sees me as a saint. That's crazy. Right? The real miracle isn't that he healed the lame man. It's that he forgave his sins. It's his eternal eternity that's the miracle guys that's the miracle here today more than anything else people come to teen challenge and they think they're overcoming their addiction and in the process they obtain eternal salvation as if that's not enough right oh i want a car and a job man god is good amen So what I want to do now is um, you guys can sing a couple of songs for us. I want to end this with uh, worshiping the Lord again. All right, Dave and Terrence. You guys, man, please stand to your feet before... Uh the King of Kings. This is all our whole life, man. It's it's before Him. You know, it's we're in the presence of the, the Lamb once slain. you have for shame lay it all down lay it all down when your cares have buried you and there's nothing left to do lay it all down lay it all down at the feet of Jesus the feet of Jesus Carried on but your heart was tied Feel the worst and felt the fire Lay it all down, lay it all down, filled with all those anxious thoughts, all your doubts became your God, lay it all down, lay it all down at the feet of Jesus, at the feet Lay it all 
down, lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. Lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. Lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. At the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus. When we give up on better days there are memories we can't erase lay it all down lay it all down when we've come to fear what we can't explain there is nothing here that can ease the pain lay it all down lay it all down at the feet of At the feet of Jesus Lay it all down, lay it all down 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 Quickly, I, I uh, forgot to mention our dollar a day thing. Um, you can sponsor one of us, sponsor a resident, you know. The program, I didn't pay a penny to come into this program, but it's not free. <laughs> Somebody else paid for it. <laughs> so this is how we do what we do, you know. Sponsor a uh, student, I think it's a dollar a day, right? I think we spend more than that on coffee. I spend like $5 on a Starbucks coffee, right? So if you guys can. Come meet, meet us at the back table, do a sponsorship, and check out our products. All right, guys? Really appreciate it. It's really an honor to be here. Appreciate you guys. God bless. There's a verse in Joel, chapter 2. It says, the, fresh, the threshing floor shall be full of grain, and the vats shall. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. And it just shows you that God will put back, and he'll put back more than you had once you give your life to him. That eternal life doesn't start, it's not like just a free pass to get into heaven. It's not really fire insurance, <laughs> let me put it that way. You know, and a lot of us roll in there smoking and we're okay, we're just glad to be there. But it starts here and now, you know, it's a, and he says there's an enemy that came to kill, steal, and destroy. But he says, but I have come to give you life, more and better life than you ever dreamed of. And God is in the transformation business. It's not, I'm telling you, it's not just that fire insurance. He will transform your life. And he will, he will give you that life that's more and better than you ever dreamed. And he'll start, and it's incremental. You know, you might take one step forward and two steps back, but know that he's working. And know that my mistakes and my mess-ups don't define me. God's love defines me. And God's love isn't based on all of us. It's based on who he is and what he's done. 
So when I screw up, it's important to realize, get my mind off of me and look at Jesus and what he's done for me. So I'm so glad you guys are here. It, it just shows us the living proof of what God is doing in your lives. And I'm so glad to see you put back together with a family. That's what I mean. He enlarges your territory. That prayer of Jabez, you know, it's just, Lord, keep me away from evil that I cause no harm. But And ask for his blessing. And then the prayer goes, enlarge my territory. And he starts doing that and starts doing that and starts doing that. Again, I never thought I'd be a pastor. I got drafted. Um, you know, I was going to be Ringo Starr number four. But uh, <laughs> I'm like, you sure you got the right guy? But he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. So we have, um, there is a, we have our regular giving station, the White Tower. And then we have a bucket over on that chair next to their station. That would be for them. We also have some pizzas outside and some salad. Uh, so help yourselves, hang out a little bit, okay? Thank you for coming. And Lord, we just ask your blessing on this team of people, this group of men. And thank you, thank you, Lord, for showing us uh, in real time what your work is doing. From living in the street to having a bed <laughs> to having people to mentor because we know healing is done in community. You need each other to do that. We've tried doing it on our own. It doesn't work. And thank you that they found you because that's the missing ingredient. So, again, we pray your beauty falls upon all of us. Establish the work of our hands. Put a protective hedge around us. And may we leave here with something in our hearts that wasn't here when we came in. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody. Mm-hmm.